Do five more steps. And you're a little more sticky now than you were. Okay, come on over here. So, have you done any chemistry in anything in school yet? Not really. No. Not really. So what I'm going to have you do is mix up a chemical that we might use in the clean room to clean a wafer. It's called 2-hydroxypropane-1-2-3-trichobexylic acid. Can you say that? 2-hydro... Mm. <laughs> you say acid. Acid. Okay, okay. are acids pretty nasty things? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do is mix up this solution, but before you can do that, you have to put on some protective equipment. All right. You're only wearing the clean room suit. That's not more. There's more! Don't. Grace, don't worry, you'll be fine. Ish. Ish. Is she actually going to work with chemicals? This that should be an acid resistant apron. Yes. <laughs> like breaking back. That's what they want to do. Like breaking back. Hey, I said that. That's my thing. Only I don't do drugs. Are you sure? Yes. You've never had medication? Okay, so now we have <laughs> now we have an acid resistant glove. And then we're gonna go for the face you must shield. Have, you must always have do double protection when you're working with acids. Okay? Now, while you're going up, I want you to listen to this. This is very care and you all need to listen to this. This is true in any lab. When you're gonna mix up an acid solution, you add acid to water to make a solution. You add acid to water to acid to make an explosion. Okay, so you've got to make sure you're going in the right direction. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to mix up this solution. You're going to add what we call deionized water. So I want you to fill this up to here. Just turn that. DI water is the pure stuff on the planet. We only allow one part per trillion of 30 different elements in there. And we have to keep it in plastic because it tends to dissolve things like stainless steel. Plastic, plastic only. So you cannot drink it? <laughs> so, really not recommend. So, you can drink it. so if you drink it, you'll probably die? Not necessarily immediately. <laughs> <laughs> can I have a cup? So go ahead, open that up and shake all your crystals in there. Like this? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, shake them in there. Oh. Yep. And then stir. Poof. Pour all of it in? All of it in. It's a pre-measured amount. So it's okay to add it in the end of the water. <laughs> Okay. If you go into a chemistry class, check the ceiling. Okay, that'll tell you how bad things went. Will things like fall from the ceiling? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I wanted to see the stir. Explosion. Now, because humans are incredibly stupid, we can't look at something and know if it's safe or not. So we have to find a way to test it. So we're going to use. You ever, ever seen this scale before? Yeah. yeah. pH scale. Each number is ten times more powerful than the one before. It's a log scale. So really, really bright. Really, really bad. Really, really dark. Really, really bad. So how are we going to test it? Well, first off, we need something to test it with. So we're going to use, anybody know what this curve is right here? Bar. Bar. Okay, it's called lichen. Okay, there's green stuff, which is fungus, but this crusty stuff, that's lichen. It's a fungus and a bacteria, works in symbiosis, from which we get the original chemical. It's the original chemical that we use to make up litmus paper. So this is a color change. All right, okay, that should be good. I'll just dip that in there. I'm going to do less, less of that quite so much. Right. There you go. Just dip it in and lay it right on there. Okay. Okay, you can go ahead and let go of it. It should stick. Okay, now does that look like a, about a pH of 2 to you guys? Uh, yeah. So it's a pretty strong acid, right? Yeah. yeah. So right, we did everything correct. My ceiling's still white. She's not got stuff splattered all over there. We use double containment, double protection. You never, never go into a chemistry lab and walk to the chemical and go, mm. what was that? Yeah. You sniff the chemicals, mm -mm. find out you don't have a sinus problem anymore. Getting warm in there? A little bit. Want a drink? No. What? It looks like lemonade. Well, it's country time lemonade. <laughs> Things that are tart are acidic. Now, <clears throat> the short name of this is citric acid. We do use citric acid in the clean room, but that's 30% concentration. So if I were to drink that, it would rip my lips off. I have very skinny lips. Okay. See Mr. Warfield over there? I've only got five minutes to give you one more 
demonstration, I need a new scientist. All right, we're out of here. This looks like electromicity. It's sort of like that. Okay, what do I want? Do you do any athletics? Yeah. What do you do? Okay, so there's a lot of cardio on it. So what I want to have you do is we're going to measure some DI water to see what its properties are first. So we have this meter here called a conductivity meter. It looks like something a carpenter would use to find something in the wall. It doesn't tell us what's in the water, it just says there's something. Right? How much it conducts electricity. So it's in units called Siemens. And for a famous German scientist, they built a company 175 years ago. The company's still going strong. Mr. Siemens, not so much. What you have to do is stir. And we don't stir in science, we stir. Yep. And the first yep. number we get is... It's about 0.8, okay? Not the best water. You can leave the probe in there. What I want you to do, we're going to see a measure of contamination. So what I want you to do is take the deepest, 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 deepest breath you can and blow bubbles until you run out of air. Yeah. Right? Don't drink the water. Now before you do that, I want you to know, should you unfortunately pass out because this is a very hard event, then I'm an emergency response technician. <laughs> I will go for help. <laughs> first rule of a first responder is don't become a victim. Okay? Ready? Let's go. So you run out of air. Oh, you gotta you gotta blow bubbles in the water. Oh. Deep, deep, deep breath. So we started off at about one, we went to 1.6, 1.72. Oh, so you went up to two. So you made the water twice as bad as it was before. <laughs> oh. Good job, Grant. What do you breathe out when you breathe out? Yeah. You do. What you know what, what the constituents of the air are? No. Any ideas? You, when you breathe in air, there's a bunch of dust particles and stuff that you breathe in. You could, so stuff that's not filtered would probably come back out. That's true. But what you do breathe out is you breathe out oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide. You do breathe in oxygen, but you don't use all of it. Okay? Now, in your body, CO2 forms something called carbonic acid. That makes your blood exchange the air. When you breathe out, the CO2 goes into the water, rips the water apart, repackages it into H2CO3, makes carbonic acid again, and makes it conduct. So basically, you have acid breath. All right. Okay, I'm going to have to let you guys go. I have tons more things to do, but if you guys come back in November, first weekend, is our open house. We do all kinds of stuff. We get to see. All right.